In this video we're going to be discussing um, setting up your first test cut with the Mach 3 control software. Um, we have our test star loaded up that we talked about in the last video and what we're going to be doing here is running um, our first cut with the torch height control on. Okay, So as I said before um, do your little mental checklist, make sure your plasma cutter is on, your uh, air is on, your rails are clean, your plate's in position, and your ground clamp is on either the plate or um, the slat. Um, so next, um, I have my position on my plate already, as you can see on the webcam. Um, and we're all zeroed out up here. My G-code is loaded up. Um, now what we're going to be talking about here is the um, plasma cutter and it's um, the uh, digital torch height control right here. So the first thing um, you need to look at, we've already viewed most of this, um, but I'm going to open up the, co the cut profile, um, talk about some of these a little bit more. Um, this is where you save your settings um, for your different materials. So to create a new one, I'm going to click Add. And I can say, um, let's say 16 gauge, um, 45 amp. And then I can say steel material, tip size 45. All this information up here is just for reference purposes. You're not actually going to be using it. It doesn't actually change anything on the system. So feed rate normally for 16 gauge is probably in the range of 250 to 300 inches a minute, depending. Um, you know, my voltage is going to be around 114 or less, a little bit less. And you know, this is all kind of off the top of my head. You're going to find these settings in your manual of your plasma cutter. It's going to have suggested tip volts. It's going to have your cutoffs, your, your pierce height, your cut height, um, and a lot of things. It, some even have tor torch height delays on there. Um, so <clears throat> your span gap, like I mentioned before, this is basically saying how sensitive the torch height control is going to be. Right now it's set at 1 volt. Um, if it were one of four, that would be a quarter of a volt. So I find that one volt is, tends to be plenty sensitive. Um, your torch height delay usually runs three, two seconds, depending if I get on the to thicker materials, then I, I start upping it. Um, and then your tip saver, I leave at about 3%. So everything else looks good on that. Now I want to save this cut profile. There's one bug in this system that you want to be aware of. Um, if I go down here and click OK to save it, I'm going to get an error, and ultimately I'm going to have to close out the restart the computer to get Mach to work correctly again. So in order to get around that um, bug, what you need to do is click Close. And then it's going to ask me to save my changes. I say yes. So now my profile has been saved up there, 16 gauge, 45 amp. So, for this one, I'm going to use the 14 gauge. Um, that's what the material I have loaded up currently. Um, I'm going to click OK. It's going to load up all my settings. <coughs> so, I'm going to check, make sure I got my preset volts correct. Um, I'm going to turn on my torch height control. Make sure I got my tip saver on make sure my torch height control is online. Um, and I got my, I'm all loaded up, I'm zeroed out, and we're ready to hit run and see how this puppy cuts.
I apologize for the uh, air compressor in the background. We're going to have to just wait a second, let that turn off. So, now I'm sure you noticed that actually part of it didn't cut out. Um, now, that's what I've determined is that that's basically it's consequence of me running this system on Windows 7. Um, and um, unfortunately, you know, running both the video capture and the high definition video camera um, puts a lot of load on things. And I. I've noticed that occasionally um, my relays just kind of throw themselves on or off randomly. Um, another, a perfect reason why you should not be using Windows 7 to run your machine. It is very finicky. Um, and this, unfortunately, is the results. Now, I can guarantee you if I was running this on my Windows XP, the standard machine, you won't be seeing this problem. Um, so if you cut this star, I can almost guarantee you, if everything's set up correctly, you're going to get a good looking cut. So that's our first cut. Now you might want to rewind that and you can look at what you can watch, really get a feel for things, is the way the torch volts reacts. And you'll start to see this, uh, you'll see the up and down arrows indicating it, you'll see this torch height control moving. Um, and so that'll kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how the torch height control is working. So, but that's our first cut with the torch height control on. Um, I recommend you um, start burning up some steel at this point. You know, we've talked about how to set up um, files in SheCam and how to post process them. Um, you know, our next step is we're going to be moving on to. Um, uh, how to utilize Inkscape to generate our DXF files to get them in the sheet cam. If you already have your own CAD, um, CAD system, you can start drawing up small little parts to um, import directly in. Um, so now our next step, we're going to be talking about in the next video how to recover from certain errors.